Earlier this year, Saudi Arabia secretly warned that it would sell part of its European debt holdings if a coalition of seven countries chose to seize roughly $300 billion in frozen Russian assets. The frozen assets are Russian money or property that Western nations cannot move or sell. This offer came as the G7 discussed measures to assist Ukraine in its ongoing war with Russia. The G7 countries, which include the United States, Japan, Germany, France, the United Kingdom, Italy, and Canada, have been discussing alternative ways to use these frozen assets to support Ukraine financially. One plan is to use the income from these assets, which might generate approximately 3 billion euros per year, principally to purchase armaments for Ukraine. This technique, known as collateralizing assets, is viewed as a compromise to prevent outright confiscation, which some European countries regard as legally hazardous and potentially damaging to the Eurozone. Saudi Arabia's attitude is part of a larger campaign by countries such as China and Indonesia, who have both expressed reservations about taking Russian assets. They fear that such moves might set a dangerous precedent, perhaps leading to similar measures against their assets in the future if geopolitical tensions escalate. Furthermore, there are concerns that the confiscation would prompt retaliatory legal steps from Russia, complicating international financial relations. But what does all of this mean, and why does it matter? What G7 decision drove Saudi Arabia to respond in this manner? During the most recent G7 summit in Italy, the leaders agreed to support Ukraine with income from frozen Russian assets. The idea calls for the creation of a $50 billion loan for Ukraine, leveraging the interest collected on about $300 billion in Russia's frozen sovereign assets, which are mostly held by European institutions. This accord, reached after prolonged talks, aims to provide Ukraine with long-term financial help for its war operations and reconstruction without outright seizing the assets, which presented legal and diplomatic issues for many European governments. The U.S. initially sought a more punitive response, including direct seizure of these assets, but European countries objected owing to legal concerns and potential Russian retribution. As a compromise, the G7 nations agreed to utilize the interest from the frozen assets to back loans to Ukraine, assuring a consistent flow of financial aid while addressing the legal issues. The Saudi finance ministry expressed opposition to the concept of confiscating Russia's assets, which some saw as a disguised threat. They specifically emphasized the debt that the French treasury had issued. Why are the G7 nations concerned about Saudi Arabia's ultimatum? Saudi Arabia's considerable holdings in European bonds, particularly in euros and French bonds, have raised concerns among European officials. The kingdom's exact ownership of these bonds is not reported in detail, but their overall financial effect is significant. For example, Saudi Arabia's National Debt Management Center has been aggressively managing and issuing international bonds, including a $12 billion sale in 2024. The kingdom's bond holdings in Europe are part of a larger strategy that involves considerable investments in U.S. Treasury bonds worth around $135.9 billion, according to recent estimates. This huge portfolio demonstrates Saudi Arabia's dominance in global financial markets. European officials are particularly concerned that if Saudi Arabia liquidates a large chunk of its bond holdings, it could establish a precedent for other governments to follow suit, potentially undermining European bond markets. Saudi Arabia's recent efforts in other financial sectors, such as the issuance of $17 billion in Islamic bonds and aggressive participation in foreign bond markets, have exacerbated this issue. Saudi Arabia's strategic financial decisions are critical not only for the country's economic stability, but also for geopolitical repercussions. European markets are sensitive to large-scale moves by significant investors, such as Saudi Arabia, whose actions have the potential to affect global market patterns and investor confidence. As the kingdom works to diversify its economy under Vision 2030, these financial moves highlight its growing economic weight and strategic importance in the global financial system. Saudi Arabia and Russia have developed a strong collaboration, particularly under the framework of the OPEC Plus Alliance, which plays an important role in global oil markets. 
Their recent decision to extend and deepen oil production cuts to stabilize market prices and effectively manage supply levels serves as evidence of this coordination. In 2023, Saudi Arabia and Russia will lead OPEC Plus in enacting large production cuts. Saudi Arabia vowed to reduce output by an additional 1 million barrels per day, while Russia committed to a 500,000 barrel reduction per day, which included cuts in both crude and product deliveries. These efforts are part of a larger strategy to fight adverse market tendencies and maintain a balanced oil market despite shifting demand estimates. This strategic cooperation between the two countries is more than just a reaction to current market conditions. It reflects their long-term alignment within OPEC+. They collectively control more than 40% of the world's oil production, making their decisions critical for global economic stability. The OPEC Plus coalition, which includes 23 nations, agreed to continue these cuts until at least the first quarter of 2024, with the option of extending them depending on market conditions. The continuous coordination between Saudi Arabia and Russia demonstrates their determination to utilize their significant oil production capacities to influence market dynamics. This collaboration emphasizes the geopolitical and economic relevance of their responsibilities in OPEC+, Plus, indicating their enormous power to lead and influence the global energy market. Let us take a little stop. Could you do us a favor? If you love our material, please click the like button. To help even more, please share your views and criticism in the comments section. Your participation helps us grow. Thank you. The G7's recent decision to use frozen Russian assets to cover a $50 billion loan for Ukraine elicited mixed reactions from the BRICS members. Russian President Vladimir Putin slammed the decision, calling it theft and a breach of international law. He contended that such moves weaken faith in the global financial system and could result in retaliation measures from Russia. BRICS countries, particularly China and India, have expressed alarm about the G7 decision. They see the move as setting a precedent that could jeopardize sovereign asset protection globally. China's significant economic links with Russia, as well as its geopolitical interests, have it concerned about the impact this move may have on global financial stability and sovereignty. India, although remaining neutral, has expressed concern about the possibility of increasing geopolitical tensions and economic instability as a result of the expropriation and reallocation of national assets. As of 2024, the trade volume between Saudi Arabia and the European Union EU, is large. Bilateral trade in goods between the two entities is valued at almost 75 billion euros each year. The EU is Saudi Arabia's second-largest trading partner, accounting for 14.8% of world commerce, and Saudi Arabia is the EU's 17th trading partner in products. Saudi Arabia largely exports oil and petrochemicals to the EU while importing machinery, equipment, and other items from the EU. This strong trading partnership is supported by considerable EU investments in Saudi Arabia, which have increased by 50% from 19.9 billion euros in 2020 to 30 billion euros in 2022. If Saudi Arabia were to stop trading with the EU, it would have a tremendous impact. Saudi Arabia accounts for a considerable share of the EU's oil and petrochemical imports. A disruption in this supply could result in higher energy prices and probable shortages, particularly in EU countries that rely significantly on Saudi oil. Such a move is expected to cause instability in global oil markets, having an impact on global prices. The EU would have to look for alternate sources for its oil imports, which might lead to increased competition and higher global pricing. There are several key questions to examine. The Group of Seven, G7, has long been regarded as a club of wealthy nations, but its current economic situation and policies may indicate growing concerns about global upheavals, particularly Saudi Arabia's recent moves. Are these historically wealthy countries still as economically powerful as they once were, or are they shifting their policies in reaction to moves made by countries such as Saudi Arabia? This shifting dynamic calls into question the G7's future impact and stability in a constantly changing global scene. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching the video. We sincerely thank you for joining us today. If our work resonated with you or inspired you, please consider showing your support by liking it and subscribing to keep connected with our community. 
You can see another video on our channel that is now on the screen. Thank you.